All right. Well, uh, it's two minutes past three uh, PST. Um, don't know what time it is in Germany, but thank you so much, everyone, for joining from all these different time zones. I really appreciate it. This is exciting. Uh, in this session, uh, I will be uh, the guide of the session. Uh, I think it's very interesting as far as the timing. The story for me in this one starts with the fact that last year, exactly on April 5th, I quit my job to start focusing on what's up with me uh, and mental health. And this has been a journey in the past 365 days. And one of the things that really stuck out to me is the definition of love within the last year. I mean, I went through so many experiences that kind of like kept echoing this to me. And uh, some of you were part of those journeys on this call and know exactly what I mean. And I thought it would be a great topic to talk about today. And one of the meditation uh, formats that I really enjoy and probably one of the first time I really started figuring out what what's meditation and how it connects with me is loving kindness meditation, where usually you're trying to use uh, some visualization to kind of like connect to yourself, start loving yourself or sharing that love with others. And it's really surprising what it does when you do it a few days in a row or just once a week, you start seeing some difference or some kind of like a shift in your perspective. And I thought that's my favorite meditation. I have three or four versions of it in my Farsi podcast. I'm like, why not? Let's try that with this uh, amazing group this week. And then we are going to have a quick practice that I kind of like developed myself. I'm kind of like sharing it for the first time here. I want to get some feedback. So that today is going to be all about love. So I hope you're all ready for that. And with without further ado, let's start it. And um, I just want to, first of all, thank my mentor, Will Haywood. Um, about 11 years ago, he taught me about meditation. And also like this uh, loving kindness meditation that I prepped for today is inspired by uh, loving kindness meditation that are made by Tara Brock, Sam Harris, or Jack Kornfeld. Korn and I really appreciate them for inspiring this meditation. And I want to invite you to find a comfortable posture. Um, if you want to, whether you're sitting or even lying down, if you can, it's your choice. Loving kindness meditations are done even better when it's done laid down, if you like. And if you don't mind also like muting yourself, that would be nice. I really appreciate it. And give your head and neck some stretch. Try to fix your posture if it's not right. Open your chest. Open your heart. Because that's what needed in this meditation more than anything. Close your eyes gently if that feels comfortable. Now, let us begin by taking a few deep breaths, inhaling slowly through the nose and exhaling softly through the mouth. With each of these breaths, feel yourself arriving more fully into this present moment. Let go of all the concerns and distractions you face today. It's Friday. As I said earlier, loving kindness meditations usually require some imagination, but it's a simple one where you think of people you may know. Let's start with someone you love, but not a complicated relationship, not necessarily your partner or a close family member. This can be a friend or a mentor, even your dog, someone that you admire or a public figure. Just 
visualize their presence in your mind's eye. And silently offer these phrases towards them. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be safe. May you live with ease. May you be filled with loving kindness. As you're saying these words, feel the connection you have toward this person. You really want them to be happy. See how this feels. Just observe it. Next, bring a second person, just like the first time. Perhaps this person can be a stranger you pass by today, or a co-worker that you're not that close with, or a far family member that you see maybe once a year. Picture their face in mind and Offer similar wishes. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be safe. May you live with ease. May you be filled with loving kindness. Notice any shifts in your heart as you extend this kindness toward them. This is someone that you barely know, but see how far you can go. Now imagine the two people you already wish them so well. They are facing you, looking at you, and they are giving you similar wishes back. They tell you, may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be safe, may you live with ease, may you be filled with loving kindness. Just notice how it feels hearing the same word back from those two people. And it's interesting, you can be the one also giving yourself all that love. Finally, let's actually expand this circle of loving kindness to a bigger group. A group of people who are experiencing some kind of hardship. This can be people of a country, a group of hard workers, those affected by war, unfortunately, those who experience pain without the justice to save them.
Pick one, one group in mind. Picture this group in peace. Filled with love. And offer these wishes, wishes toward them. May you all be happy. May you all be healthy. May you all be safe and live with ease. May you all be filled with loving kindness. Feel this boundless compassion and love. Feel the feeling. And now imagine this group is standing in front of you, facing you, looking at you, and giving you similar wishes. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be safe and live with ease. May you be filled with love and kindness. And just notice how it feels to have so much love coming your way without any boundary and any condition. In the last few seconds, take a moment to notice how you feel in body, mind, and heart. And use your breath to pay your attention to this moment. Enjoy the present moment with all this feeling of love that you received and gave. And whenever you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes It's clo if it's closed. Know that this is actually a practice. You can do it in five minutes. You can do it in 30 minutes. It's your choice. But once you do it on a weekly or daily basis, it's very interesting. So... Thank you, everyone, for sharing this experience with me. I appreciate it. And if you are actually listening to my Farsi podcast, there are some episodes with similar names. So just feel free to tune in. There's a Farsi version of it if that may feel more connected to you, Farsi speakers in this crowd. And with that said, uh, now that we are all filled with love, who cares about fear anymore? All right. <laughs> Let's actually shift the gears a little bit. And I think this is uh, kind of the reason that I was motivated to think about this. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to also like be sharing this pr quick presentation. Not that it's special, but it has some bullet points that I think is interesting to be shared. I share all of these usually with uh, in the podcast, uh, so the link to the presentations usually also like is, is in the show notes if you're listening to the audio. So this was actually a technique that uh, I developed for myself. Um, usually those, uh, those of you, which I think is most of you who are in tech, 
we know that PMs always like to uh, have a rule or some structure for everything. And I found myself, and I told you guys uh, last year about the same time I quit my job, I found myself um, a lot of time making decisions and choices based on fear. And I kind of challenged myself to think about what if it was love, you know, and finding what's driving and figuring out what's driving my decisions or choices. So I noticed that most oftentimes I have a choice to make. Always, uh, always there is choice between love and love and fear. I mean, it's kind of like generalizing this. You may say, no, there are other drivers, and I agree with you. But this was a situation that I was in. And this kind of like framework made it so easy for me to bring awareness to the decisions and choices I make in my life. So one thing that I notice is uh, often the way we are phrasing these things in our mind is like this. I did something because of something. I said something or I say something because of something. I chose something because of blank. And really getting to understanding of how we are filling these blanks are important. Again, formulating everything. Um, this is also something those folks who are in user research that are familiar with this technique that we always care about hearing the because when a user is talking. And why not talking to ourselves? I try to actually start looking at the because beyond some of the decisions I was making. And I saw um, there is a, still a very good percentage of my decisions that are either based on fear or based on love. And what do I mean by that? For example, I did hang out with friends because I was worried they're going to think I'm a snob. I said a lie because I had to cover and not be judged. I had to cover something that I was worried that I'm going to be judged about it. I chose a job because that's the only job I can get. And if you see, there is this theme, right? Like when you go deeper, there is this theme of uh, it's not necessarily everything is uh, fear or love so exactly, but that theme of do I make something that is bringing love and joy in my life that is rooted in the joy and li love in my life? Or is it rooted in some of the fears or insecurity uh, that I may have in my life that I have to uh, go and like understand them better? So now, based on that, uh, and this is something I actually used to do sometimes, just to open a spreadsheet and write down some of my decisions, some, some of my choices, so, for example, I said yes to a party because being with these friends brings me joy, brings me true joy. So this is very straightforward. It's love. I genuinely am truthful to myself and I say, okay, yeah, it was based on really having that joy with these friends. I decided to go to gym because I was worried I'm going to get a heart attack. That one is from fear, of course. But what could, what could that be if it was love? Um, I could probably, it could probably come from something like, because being healthy means I love me. Like having that sense of uh, self-love. What if we could replace that? We can still do, say, and choose the same thing, but we can actually start figuring out what are the areas that we can love ourselves more. So this becomes a way for me, as as I was just saying, it becomes uh, it became a point where I could just be more aware of those decisions. Uh, whenever I was like in a time of... Um, stress at work or decisions that uh, I I know it's coming from anger. I know it's coming from some insecurities that I had in a meeting or in a conversation. It helped me to take a step back and say, okay, Ali, you're taking this decision based on fear. It's fine. You made it and it's gone, but know that you had these options. Um, actually, last night as I was creating this uh, um, presentation, I decided not to reply to a comment because it was in my quiet hours. So like really respecting ourselves and bringing that self-love to some of the decisions we are making. So I'm going to share this document with you all uh, right here. We're going to take a few minutes. If the, this made sense, we're going to take a few minutes and just uh, think of a time like maybe today in the past week that you made a decision 
uh, or made a choice that um, actually was either based on fear or love or something similar to that and just see if you can actually also like use this method to kind of like just bring that awareness to why you made some decisions, why you made a choice or did something. Um, so everybody should have access to this spreadsheet. Feel free to either write them in this spreadsheet uh, if you're on the laptop or just take a, a pen and paper and write it for yourself on the side and maybe we can have five minutes in the end to have some sharings. If you're writing down, which I see some folks still do, please continue wondering if anyone wants to share anything or if there is any thoughts. What do you think, Ali, about a spectrum? Is it always love versus fear or could it be both? Or could it be just entirely something else that cannot be categorized? I have an example if you want. Uh, yes, please. Go for so, it. So uh, last night, I I, I was working, uh, you know, I was working at 11 p.m. at night, okay? Then the reason was I wanted to complete something, but not because anyone was forcing me, but because it was just in my head. And I thought if I wait till morning, I'll have to reset myself and be like, ah, oh, shit, let me try to remember where I was. And so I might as well just take 
half an hour and get it done. And I also enjoy, I also enjoy that part. It's not that I work every day. day. It was just yesterday. So now I was trying to categorize it, but I don't know. I could say, if you think about it, I love it because uh, I really enjoy the project and I wanted to get it done. But it was also out of fear because, well, it needed to be done. (laughs) So what are your thoughts on the spectrum and isn't it true in general, like a lot, almost 80 to 90% of our decisions are a combination of both and we should just try to push it to the love direction? Just, yeah, that's a very broad it's a, it's a very good point. Uh, I, I'm curious if anyone from the crowd wants to chime in. Sure. Uh, I was interested in the same issue um, I kind of picked something intentionally that I thought might be a challenge because it's like, all right, I'm feeling a little sick today and there's a project I put off writing. It wasn't essentially due today. And so like that's some like I'm taking care of myself. It's also some, um, you know, it's, it's also a certain amount of like, well, but am I avoiding the project? I'm like, yeah, maybe a little bit too. Cause like one of the reasons um, why I didn't, um right on things it's like oh i'm worried if i like you know if i sit down uh it's not gonna be high quality writing anyway um and so there's some of that going through my mind and and kind of the way i tried to resolve this in our short exercise was just thinking through like well okay what would it look like if i were motivated entirely by love like what would be the optimal situation like sit down let myself see if something comes out if i want to write like not be worried about the quality and if it's happening great enjoy writing if it's not then you know decide oh it, it's better for myself just to take a rest today kind of thing and i was like oh okay so so that was enlightening in terms of what vipple said about like all right i have a mix of motivations how can how how would i shift this more solidly into the love camp so i love that exercise i love that and uh, I think you're not alone uh, in this uh, observation. It's a spot-on observation. As a matter of fact, um, this is how I-, I personally also like experience it, where it feels always it's a combo. But for me, what I observed is there's always one that wins, especially in work environment, that you're like more um, stressed and like under a lot of pressure. You all know like the deadlines that sometimes we had to meet in our previous companies so with those a lot of times it just felt one one or two are more um uh, uh, let's say fear is more highlighted sometimes in cases for me and that's where like the trick happened for me i'm like okay let's just observe it it just feels there is a lot of fear maybe a little bit of a love that i can't even see it how to change this narration how to make this shift which is very interesting what you all uh, also shared here. Um, we are at time, but I'm curious if anyone else had any observation, any anything else they wanted to share. I really love um, this discussion and what we, felt, we Paul brought up because I think um, that is the point that a lot of the times there are mixed motivation. And I think uh, what you just brought up is absolutely beautiful and transformational when we start noticing more it's just just the awareness that there is this pool between love and fear behind all of our decisions and like being aware of it like that's that's the biggest thing and then when that awareness exists then it's easy to shift uh like to towards love because you know that it's there you know that there there are parts of you that are motivated by love and it's just about shifting as both you ali and alec um mentioned it's about shifting that motivation that intention towards uh, love and just move with with the intention of love um this topic is really amazing thanks for the whole exercise on the topic i really enjoyed it of course thank you all for participating and as always uh, we are going to stay and hang out but if you have to go thank you for staying two minutes over thank you for joining this love session have a lovely weekend and wherever you are enjoy your weekends i'm so glad to see all your amazing faces today